Right. Now, yeah, this will tell us. And that's pretty conclusive. Still going. Close. Oh, wow. I think he got it down. How strong is he? Got it, folks, and welcome back to the Pick and Go Rugby Podcast, brought to you by the TAB. My name is Cal Tiley. Joined in the studio yet again by my good mate Paul Mawate. Paul, it is semi finals time. How good? It's fantastic. And, and wow, we. Um, how about the quarterfinals? They, they were just. You, you watch Did the I tell you, Paul? Did what? I tell you, Paul? Yeah. You should be right. blown today as well. He's jumped in. He's jumped in, all right. We're going to introduce our guest. You may already know uh, oh, sorry. his voice, but he's back for his third run on in the Pick and Go Rugby podcast, coming in on the back of a man of the match performance last week. It is, of course, the great man, Israel Dag. Is he? Give it to him. Light him yes, up. I told you so, and I told many of you out there as well. None of you. Where, where is the loyalty in this country? I know we've got to do it all again. I know, Carl, you you, you will oh, we're on the same page, but that guy next year, I don't know. He needs to go blonde. He already is blonde. He already is blonde. <laughs> but well, yeah. I, South Africans are still there, and they were my bet to start the tournament. So uh, there's still a chance of taking the whole lot. You also had Argentina to make the final, uh, and they're still there. We'll get to that shortly. That was playing eighty ones. Yeah, we'll we'll see where your head's at after um after we. Talk a bit of code first. We'll oh. we'll start it off as we always do, fellas. Predicament of the week. I thought um, long and hard on this one. World Cup is on the line. Would you rather be the guy who bombs an easy pass or drops a sitter with an open try line, or be the last line of defence in a two-on-one? You're so indecisive about going for the man or ball that you do nothing. You lose the game both ways. Izzy, I'll go to you first. Well, the last one. The last, the last one? You want to defend it? Because I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> you can go look at the Bulls Crusaders in a game in 2013, I think it was. I think Grayling, he was a big prop, makes a break. He's huge, big boy. And he goes to throw this pass. I took the dummy, and he dummied me and scored a try. Now, I don't, the reality is I didn't want to make that tackle. So <laughs> I've done it. I'm going to have to go with the last because yeah, you'd just be a little bit more. You can kind of hide it a little bit more when you're at the back. You know, you it's the hardest position to defend. You've got a you know you've got acres of space. You've got players coming from everywhere, and you've got to try and make that decision. So if you make the wrong decision, you don't look like as much as an idiot if you drop an absolute sitter on the line to score the winner. So I'll go off the latter. I've done the former. <laughs> Have you? Oh, you'll look up on the line. Not playing professional rugby, obviously. <laughs> uh, did all the hard work over 80 metres and then dropped it over the line. Oh, God. <laughs> um, Paul? 80 metres. Mate. It was yeah, it's uh, 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 How uh, much gravy uh, on there? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the story now. <laughs> I'm going to tell the story because I want to. Uh, we, were, we had a scrum in the 22. I was playing first five. Halfback came to me down the blind, dummy the winger. I had uh, a winger outside me. And you know how you every team's got like a – maybe someone who's maybe not up to par, you put them on the wing. He was calling for it, and I said, no way. Chipped the fullback, got the bounce, over the line, knocked it on. <laughs> Threw a pass. That is sad, mate. Well, you saw one of your mates out there you've trained all year with, and you said, oh, no, nah, he's got – Oh, look, the level, of, the level of rugby is there was no training. There was no training. We just turned up on a Saturday. And, uh, yeah, look. Oh, it's so I good. Went for, I went for glory. Paul, what would you do? Oh, defense, 100%, because you can you can um, sort of, uh, I guess, brush over it slightly. You can say, well, the, our line wasn't uh, yeah. it wasn't uh, solid. You know, you can blame someone. Oh, he was your man. Uh, uh, you <laughs> drop the ball over the line. There's only it's just you. you it's blame, all on you. You could blame the passer. Mm. Oh, yeah, didn't hit me where I wanted. Yeah. Hands were here. <laughs> yeah. 
everyone can see. Everyone. That was like Ma Nunu, mate. Ma Nunu against England. He passed me the ho most horriblest pass ever. Like, it was 300 metres in front of me. And I went to reach out and grab it, and I dropped it. And he goes, and I said, bro, he's like, bro, catch it. <laughs> pass was, I was like, watch the replay. It was 500 metres in front of me. Never the pass's fault. Never the pass's fault. Yeah, 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 definitely <laughs> defensively. It's where you can you can sort of share the blame, even if you're the last line, you mm. can share the blame there. Yeah. Who, who's the one who's the one guy in World Rugby at the moment that you wouldn't want to be one on one with at the back end of a game like that? Probably Cheslin Colby. Oh yeah. Yeah. Probably like you he... excuse that he's gonna go around you. Well, he can go around me with pace. He can go, yeah. Like when you're when you're at fullback and you've got three, you know, fifty meters either side of you, that is the hardest position to defend. Trust me, I got made look. I got I got plenty of highlight reels for other players out there that have put me on my my backside. So, I'd say probably probably Cheslin. Um, you'd make a case for who else would you make a case for? There, Reece Samet over at for Wales. Um, there's plenty out there, but I'd probably say Cheslin at the moment. I'd say after the try you scored on the weekend, mine would be uh, it's a it's bit. That was terrifying. That. Oh man, what are you doing tackling him up there? I, I, or I, if he's running away, just wrap the ball up, bro. Wrap the ball up and fall over the line. No, I just fall over. Mm. Okay, Toki <laughs> Ahu. Oh yeah, no thanks. Because he could go oh, around you and straight over the top. He of can't you. go around you. Maybe you, Paul. He can't go around. <laughs> Can't go around a fullback. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. How'd, how'd that South African prop go? I'll get, I'll get you that bull's prop. <laughs> he went through me, okay? Because I went like that to take the dummy. Don't don't fall for dummy, kids. Always take the ball. All right. Uh, before we get to looking at some results, we're going to look. Uh, I've, I've thrown a span in the works, haven't told you guys, but we're going to have a look at the betting results from last week because. Yes. Two out of three of us. It was a great week. A great week. Um, Izzy, you had Argentina, New Zealand, South Africa, and unfortunately Fiji all head-to-head -head in a multi paying 31.75. Just missed. Would have been. You would have crippled the TAB if that had to come in. <laughs> Fiji, mate. Honestly, they should have won that game. It would have been easy for me to take England, but I, I just thought Fiji, if ran out, I had some glasses on and actually seen them and refereed the way it should have been. They sh they should have won that. All right. What would I have won? Three grand. Yes. yes. <laughs> you would have gone to the top of the leaderboard and not catchable. <laughs> what you boys do? The dollar ten favorites here. Yeah. Uh, Paul, Paul had uh, Argentina and into South Africa, both head to head, paying five twenty. Yeah. Put us hundred dollars on that. Five twenty return. He's up four twenty for the week. Not bad. Uh, and then I had what you called a smart bet at the time last week, Izzy. South Africa, Argentina, and Fiji plus eight and a half mm. in a multi at 1035. Had 30 on that, paying, uh, returning 310.50. And then I had 70 on New Zealand, one to 12 at $2.90. That returned $203. So I was up 413.50 for the week. Great betting, boys. Very, very good. good betting. Awesome. I Look, I don't think it's any surprise that Izzy takes a four-leg multi and misses one leg. <laughs> <laughs> he he would have got, got a bonus bet back with the oval ball mega multi buster. Would have got a bonus bet uh, back uh, up to $50. But, uh, yeah. It's so that. you boys are smart bettors. I don't really go into too much depth for it. I'm just – I love an odds. So if I'm going to find something with you huge odds. I, I love it when it shows the return – potentially what you could get on the page on the screen and i'll get really excited about that so i don't really put too much thought into it to be honest see and yet <laughs> we, when we talk about <laughs> rugby on this podcast everything you say makes sense yeah. then you get to the betting part and you just forget about everything you just said <laughs> i just go erratic on it it's like my horse Punting, mate. I'm horrible at it. R18, of course, but gambling responsibly. It's safe. Uh, but I just can't. Yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah. Like, it's, I've got so many options in my dome. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. And I pick it, and it's wrong. Where I should have gone with my original pick, which was gold, uh, gold trip last year in the Melbourne Cup. Yes. And I didn't back it. I was on. What did it pay about 20? Did it pay 20s? Yep. 22. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're like Zach Galifianakis with all those numbers spinning around your head there, is he just going round and round? Oh, I'll have that one and that one and that one. <laughs> all right. Let's have a quick look at the results from last week. First game, Wales 17, Argentina 29. Wales got off to a very hot no, Wales got off to a very hot start. Mm. Um Izzy, they I thought they cut Argentina to pieces around the ruck. Mm. And, I think there will be a team that wears black that would have taken note of that for this week. Um, what did you make of the game? It was an interesting game. Um, I, I always picked Argentina to come over the top top of them in the end, um, but I thought that uh, the way that Wales played, particularly in that first half and putting them under so much pressure that they were just going to come away with it and be too good in the end. But then Argentina, a masterclass, they made an adjustment at halftime or just after halftime with Nicolas Sanchez. He came on and absolutely changed the game for them and, and was, uh, you know, was a masterstroke in the end. So both teams, um, you know, Wales going into this game full of confidence, having top in their, top their pool. Um, you know, Argentina flying on the radar. But I just always thought Argentina, they're just un unpredictable. You know, like the All Blacks won't be taking them lightly this week, particularly what well, what they did in 2022 last year. So defensively, they were very, very good. If you remember that game, they'll bring in a lot of line speed. So I think that area of concern around the ruck, they would have done a bit of work, David Kidwell, this week and um, and tidied that up and see what kind of mindset of them in. But, mate, the result there I thought was going to eventuate anyway. I thought they'll be too good for Wales. Paul? Look, Wales will be, they'll be kicking themselves. They were, what, 10 nil up with about three minutes left to go in the first half. They, they, they walk they into played the, the better game, right? They, they walk into the sheds 10 nil up at half time. <clears throat> They're feeling very, very good uh, uh, about themselves. Mm. They give away a couple of penalties um, and Buffelli knocks them both over. So the, the Argentinians, who have been pretty much outplayed for the bulk of that first half, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm go in only four points down. So they've got a wee bit of momentum mm. as they um, start the second half. And and Buffelli, who was kicking them from all over the field, he kicked one from, what, about 55? With ease. Um, and, and it cleared the crossbar easily. They they just kept themselves in the game. Um, and unfortunately for the Welsh, they they let that get to them. Um, and, I, and I thought the defence and the I don't know, the go forward from the Argentinians in close was very, very good. Um, they kept making the advantage line in that second half. Um, the punters who backed the either team to win by seven, um, under seven and a half, were hard done by uh, mm. because it looked for all sorts this was going to be a very, very tight game. Um, and then they get a few penalties. Sanchez gets that intercept try. Um, that, that could have gone either way. Um, that closed the game out, obviously. But um, Argentina, in the end, they deserved that win. Um, being 10 nil down, mm. you, you, it could have gone a couple of ways. It could have got they could have let the emotion get to them, and Wales might just have blown them off the park after that. But they dug down, and they kept picking up points on a regular basis. It's like in a cricket match where the other team's batting, and you just keep picking up wickets on a regular basis, and it it doesn't let the opposition get into any sort of rhythm. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I really enjoyed the game. I thought Argentina, in the end, did deserve to win it. I just thought the scoreline sort of flattered them slightly. Yeah, almost like they learned uh, from their first game against England. <laughs> points. Points yeah. are a premium. Pick them up. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take the points in this uh, in these playoffs, boys. Points on offer have to take them. There was a couple of teams on the weekend. There was the undoing, really. Yep. Yep. Next one, big one. Ireland twenty four, New Zealand twenty eight. Uh, plenty of talking points out of this. I just want to touch on a couple of things we we all discussed last week, fellas. 
Um, <clears throat> one of them, ABs need, need to get off to a hot start. We said mm. Mm. they were very shaky at first uh, couple of plays, dropping balls, terrible kicks. But once they settled down, like you said, Izzy, mm. a couple of clean off the tee early. Yeah. You get the rhythm. They scored that try. They're up 13 0. Um, heck of a start. The other thing we said was the loose forwards need to step up and play well. Well, Stam Kane, Adi Severe, Shannon Frizzell. Yeah. Wow. They, they just they just laid the laid the platform, didn't they, boys? Like it's 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 a funny old game, but it's an easy game in the end. If you if you build school ball pressure, you're forcing the other opposition into doing things that they probably haven't done traditionally, you know, chasing a game. Ireland were always chasing that game. You get up, you get two easy kicks on offer, you build that pressure. Three, six, you know, start at, well, all of a sudden I guess the 13 points and then you start seeing some things that um, Ireland haven't done in the past. So, mate, they 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 weren't um, they weren't perfect for sure, but, mate, they showed heart, they showed ticker, and they showed belief throughout that game, and you saw you saw that they had a chip on their shoulder. There's been a lot of chats thrown around, podcasts, social media articles in regards to Ireland. They are this, they are that, and the All Blacks. You saw they took it personally, but particularly that hurt from last year. So it wasn't going to be easy for the uh, hard for them to get up. Sam Kane has been thrown through the ringer. He's coming back from injury. You know that's his brother. That's Adi Savia's brother in terms of his All Blacks brother, and there was no surprises, really, that they stood out. You saw what it meant to them. They were so good at the breakdown. Like, you're up against Kalen Doris, Van der Fleer, Omani, two of the three of the best loose forwards going around. Well, they were made to look average in that, in that, in that game. They got beat into the punch, particularly at the breakdown. They got you know, dominated off the park at the collision area, and the All Blacks pretty much had it their own way um, it was an awesome display. I was so proud as a former player just to watch it, knowing what had been the conversations that had been going around, how much uh, pain that they would have been feeling. But using it as fire, and shit, that fire was burning come Sunday, wasn't it? Certainly was. Paul, what is more impressive? 37 phases on attack or 37 phases of defending without giving away a penalty? Uh, without giving away the penalty, mm. unreal, wasn't it? Uh, that that was huge, uh, and, and at the beginning of the, the thirty-seven phase attack, Ireland were looking good. They were they were making ground. They were making ground, and then as soon as they got into the twenty-two, mm. they just started to go sideways, mm. sideways, 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 um, and it sort of helped the All Blacks um, in a way. It was the All Blacks still had to make the tackles. And as he uh, as as he sort of stated, the All Black loose forward trio totally outplayed the Irish loose forward trio. As he said, um, Doris and Omani are just absolutely in the top five loose forwards in the world at the moment, mm -hmm. and they got outplayed by Artie Savia and Sam Kane. Sam mm -hmm. Kane had his best game ever, I he, think, in yes. an All Black jersey. He was everywhere. He was yes. huge. So. That was one sort of area of the game where I thought Ireland, they could keep that. I, I thought they they wouldn't get outplayed like they did in that area. Um, but the All Blacks just totally, totally dominated there. Um, I guess the All Blacks, I think they made uh, an extra 50 or 60 more tackles than the Irish. And most of them... Most of them would have been in that last mm -hmm. two, three minutes of play. Mm -hmm. um, they just, their, their defense was just so, so solid. Um, Fainuku came in to the side, mm -hmm. looked like he'd been there the whole time. He mm -hmm. played really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, scored the first try. He, he, he did a lot of real, a lot of simple things really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, it was yeah. 71 extra tackles New Zealand made. <laughs> there you go in 37 phases you you touched on it there um paulie just a big factor in that game and something that we need to paint the picture on going forward to these next couple of games potentially if we make the final is our bench and i thought our bench come on and added so much 
And you think back to the great times and great eras, eras of, of 2015 when our bench come on and won us actually games. That was a difference. You you think about Fletcher Newell and Tamaiti Williams coming off in the heat of the moment, going straight into a scrum. We're a man down, and they have to hold their own, and they do it comfortably, not comfortably, but they do it you know with a lot of intent. And I was like, wow, these boys are absolutely. I think Anton Leonard Brown coming in to play on the wing. On the wing, when Aaron Smith is like, mate, chase this box kick, box kick, he's like, I've never chased a box kick in my life. But he gets up, he adds enough pressure that he needs to, tackles one of them out, gets up there, creates a bit of chaos, comes off the wing, makes probably the biggest tackle I've ever seen from a winger um, defensively. Like, I just think, and then we obviously Sam Whitelock coming on and Papa Lee probably played, I think he made 10 tackles in that last couple of minutes and didn't miss one. So that was a big turning point and gave me a hell of a lot of confidence knowing that our bench can come on and do what they do uh, in, in those last nine minutes so they can handle the pressure and obviously that big moment when you know, the rolling more, they get close and Geordie Barrett gets in there and stops it. I'm like, how the hell did he do it? How did he get in there? Because if he didn't, boys, we would have been crying straight to the, where do we go, ice cream shop because we need something sweet and sweet us up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I said, there's so many talking points out of that game, and it, and it was just incredible to watch. Another one we talked about last week, boys, was uh, discipline. Mm. New Zealand cop two yellow cards, which makes this game even more impressive. Uh, you know, played 14 men for 20 minutes mm. and, and still came away with it. Like you say, Geordie stood up, stopped that try. The Aaron Smith... Keen to hear your take on this, Izzy. I thought the Aaron Smith yellow card was a bit of a – it was a bit over top. Mm. If that, if he flicks that back half an inch, it's fine. It's There were a couple of other games where there was similar well, uh, scenarios. Oh, oh okay, don't get me started there. He should be he should be yellow. If Aaron Smith is yellow, he's got to get a yellow. It's just reality. And they had an overlap. So yes, as well. you know, if he didn't put his hand out and that pass went past, there was a flying Fijian – one on one with a with an English, and I think it beat him nine times out of ten. So, uh, and saying that, when I the the picture is, you can't put your hand up, you can't stop the ball from from passing and in creating uh, or disadvantaging the attackers. So he's put his hand up and put it out. Did he? Was he intentionally trying to make the make the part catch? No, put his hand out. So I think it's the motion you got to look at. His motion was to stop it, disrupt it. And uh, once you do that, I think uh, that call was made. And on the day, it was probably the right call. But where they tripped themselves up is right now didn't make the right call for England Fiji. So the consistency wasn't there. But the craziest thing about those uh, yellow cards, and I think I've touched on it throughout my radio show. I don't even know if I've touched on it. But those yellow cards are what-if moments throughout the week. What if we lose our hooker? You know, who's going to throw the ball in? Uh, what changes are we going to have to make? What if we lose our halfback? You know, the two probably arguably the two most important positions on the park. Richie Mung is gonna go into ten. So although those happened, I've been in that environment, they would have planned for that. They would have planned for that throughout the week, the what if moment. So uh hopefully we don't see it again, boys, because I don't want the yellow cards to ruin this tournament. Um but we found a way, so it was good. I did laugh. I, I saw something um for Richie Mwanga said that at halftime he went into the sheds and he pulled Aaron Smith aside and he said Mate, how do I feed? How do I feed the scrum? Where do I? What do I do? <laughs> that first scrum when they came back out, he's down there in a squat for a good yeah. forty seconds before the scrum even goes to come together. It was, it was, was quite funny. <laughs> All right, uh, next one. We just touched on it. Um, England thirty, Fiji twenty four. Second week in a row, you could argue uh, some calls. Well, probably fourth, fifth week in a row, you could argue some calls have gone the wrong way against the Fijians. They put up a hell of a fight and an incredible tournament, but mm. probably should be playing this week, Paul. Did, didn't we have a round table about the unconscious bias mm. of referees a few weeks ago? We did, a, yeah. a, Around them, maybe not knowing it, but slightly favouring the more favoured side, Yep, the, the favourites in, in, in a game. And um, England were... Um, fairly warm favourites against the Fijians last week. And as, as he's already pointed out, um, 
a yellow card in the All Blacks game isn't quite a yellow card in the England Fiji game. Mm. Um, boy, oh boy, they're a they're a wonderful team to watch the Fijians, uh, and to get back to twenty four all. Um, you think, right, these guys, now they've got a bit of momentum behind them. They could really, and it's just a couple of little things that happen in that game. A, couple, a call or two doesn't go their way, and it changes that momentum, and it swings it back the way of the, the palms. So uh, a fantastic, fantastic performance by the Fijians. I hope that they can continue to grow uh, from this, mm. and I think um, having the uh, Drua uh, in the, and I don't know what the Super Rugby um, tournament is going to be look will look like in a year, two, three, four years' time. Um, but there has to be some sort of Pacific flavour in there somewhere. In fact, more Pacific flavour, yeah. uh, I, I think. Uh, yeah, it, it was a fantastic performance by the Fijians. Uh, the last time they played before that quarterfinal, of course, the Fijians won. Yes. So this is not... It's not a a result or uh, that is out of the ordinary now. The Fijians are now up there with the with the Poms, mm. with with Scotland, with Wales. Yeah, well, look at looking at all the major sort of stats that they've got here on the the World Cup uh, website. Fiji won five of the seven sort of major stats over the game. Is he? They they were in it the whole way. Don't get me started. That's no, exactly what we want to do. Get you started. I, I, I can't get this image out of my head. Post that game, when they go to, to the, the stands, and Bill Beaumont gets up and he's chirping and happy as hell, and he's right next to Kate, Royal Kate, um, and they start going on. And I'm just thinking, poor Fiji. Mm. You know, they never had a chance. They, they never had a chance to, to beat England. You're just up against everything. You're up against all the odds, all, all the referees call, all the fa- like. No one wants them to win. No one in world rugby wanted them to win. So I feel for them. And you touched on them. they're up on all the stats, but they weren't on the right side of the referees' calls. You know, there was a lot of fifty fifties that England, uh, that Fiji should have had go their way, but they didn't, and they just had to chase the game the whole time. If it wasn't for individual brilliance that got them out of a couple of occasions to score some unreal tries, it could have been a horrible night for them. And it's sad to say, but, you know, I, I get disappointed with it. Oh, I want to see some some fairness for these for these island nations. Um, I know it's probably not ideal for a, a, you know, marquee event to have smaller nations competing, but um, I think we need to take a... a bigger look at it but you know england have found a way they're in the semi-finals they've been there before and um can't see them going past us <laughs> that's on uh individual performance semi rad raja yeah man was hot mm. he was unbelievable especially in the dying stages of the game that last 20 minutes line breaks offloads well he's Bump. one i would want to tackle yeah chuck oh. him in no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, just chuck any, just chuck any Fijian. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. want to tackle. How cool! How cool was the uh, the Fijian uh, alternate strip? I like that. That was, yeah. was very nice. That was good. Should have made England wear it. <laughs> All right, last one. Uh, France twenty eight, South Africa twenty nine. The French, the home team, are out. Luckily for them, they don't have far to go home. Uh, the first half was up there with uh, maybe AB's Australia in 2000, the, the greatest test match of all time. Mm. It was, it was bang, back. Bang, bang, bang. Try, 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 Paul. It was, uh, it was pretty intense. I, I'm still trying to figure out how the South Africans won this game. <laughs> the, the French dominated position. The no. French dominated field position. They had a captain in DuPont who was just fantastic uh, in that game. Um, they and I look at the Springboks and I and I look at the game and I think they sort of remind me of hyenas. Mm. They feed off scraps. Yeah, and they, they punish you um, for the 
um, any sort of turn those turnovers that they made they they either made a whole lot of um, territory off those turnovers or they scored a try um, the try to I think Colby uh, where that was a quick turnover off a French ruck and they just popped it out into the back line I can't remember who kicked it through or maybe Jesse yeah, Creel yeah. Jesse Creel yeah Jesse Creel um, and, and Colby uh, picks up the ball and goes over for that that just another complete turnaround. Mm. So the South Africans are very, very dangerous, even if they're not getting the bulk of possession. Mm. The ball that they do get, they do something with it. Um, they, Yeah, they were fantastic, I, I thought, South Africa, um, having to do uh, what they did with that little position. They they were super. And so they'll be very, very dangerous. Um, if they make it to the final against Argentina. Ah, the All Blacks, I mean. <laughs> Boy, wash your mouth out. <laughs> <Don't pop. laughs> Mate, it was it was a good game. I, I yeah, it was a hell of a game actually. I was training while I was watching it, so just watching a little bit of a glimpse, but mate, well j- jam packed with action. Hell of a start. Um I think with the game because you look at the stats, I think I said they've got to miss forty three tackles in that game and you know, like they, they gave away a hell of a lot of errors. They lost a ton of possession. But what they did do well, Kim, um, Paulie nearly called you Kempy there. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Who's, that, who's that an insult to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, I think the area that they won was the high ball. You know, they obviously, Delhi India scored that try from a high ball um, juggle. You know, France were good at giving, you know, Kicking high balls to the opposition, putting them under pressure, but receiving it themselves probably let themselves down there. So they just fed off scraps. They fed off scoreboard pressure, staying in the fight. And when you've been in those moments at a World Cup before, when the pressure's on, you come out the other other side. And then obviously, even it's the best last try when you come off after having a uh, having a wee spell. And just on that spell, has there been a bit of chat about those HIAs and? You know, I think Peter Deft the to Toy went off for an HIA, and then Eben Esbeth obviously he got carded, didn't he? But he yeah, went off. For an, yeah. He went off. Someone else for HIA. There was a bit of chat about HIAs and maybe South Africa uh, uh, doing it uh, tactically. But because they because because they didn't have the bomb squad on the bench, mm. uh, what well, he went with a was it a three four three mix four three yeah uh, mm. forwards back, which is the first time I think we've seen it this uh, tournament. Um, had to give the forwards a rest somehow. I don't know. I'm not yeah. saying. I'm not that. saying that. But when someone explained it to me, I was like, "Wouldn't be surprised. Makes <laughs> sense." Because I don't know if the match doctor can come on and say he's had a head knock. Can I take him off for an HIA? Or whether it's the TMO, or the match doctor, that is the only official that can make that call. That'll be something quite interesting to find out, lads. Is whether a match team doctor can go and make those calls. Because you have to get all over that. I'm not a doctor, so I'm going to stay out of it. Something to ponder there, Carl. Hey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, something else that's come out of this, the, the Cheslin Colby charge down proved uh, pivotal in the in end. The end. In well, the he's end. He's got to kick it anyway. Hey, what? He's got to get it over. <laughs> yeah, have you seen the video that suggests he might have been about ten meters offside? Nah, he was he was good. I've seen one video from back back uh, from the back view, and when you watch Ramos, he makes a little something, and then he's gone. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's, it's someone... you, think? you think it's? It oh, was... I... nah, he's good. But uh, I have seen the video that the, I, I watched it before. There's one that sort of breaks it down and. It's claiming that there's no uh, no movement from Ramos, and then when he does finally move his feet, Colby's already at the twenty-two. <laughs> it's yeah, no, no, fair to can charge down. As someone who's had a charge down, uh, a, a goal kick charge down, it's um, it's not some, yeah, it's not something you want on your record. <laughs> uh, who even charges these days? Hey, that's a great lesson for kids. The other one uh, to that's come out of. The other one I thought was pretty good. The come out of the Fiji game, the the penalty that they took uh, later in the second half, I think, and it hit the the upright of the crossbar. 
Yeah. Just followed up and they got the ball back. So there's a little lesson to everyone out there. Don't yeah. die at all. Keep, keep going. Your kick is only as good as its chase, we always got told. Nice. 100%. Nice. All righty. Round table. Um, the New Zealand team has been named. I'm going to read mm -hmm. it out quickly. Ethan DeGroote, Cody Taylor, Tyrell Lomax, Sam Whitelock, Scott Barrett, Shannon Frizzell, Sam Kane, Adi Sevier, Aaron Smith, Richie Moanga, Mark Talia is back. Jordy Barrett, Rico Ioane, Will Jordan, and Bowden Barrett on the bench. Takeaho to Marty Williams, Fletcher Newell, Brody Retallick, Dalton Papali'i, Finlay Christie, Damian McKenzie, and Anton Leonard Brown. Mark Talia is back. Is he? I didn't think Lester Fyanganuku did much wrong last week. Yeah. Um, there was obviously Talia's last week. We, we've heard the rumours. We know he was out. He was injured, whatever. Um, you've been in a similar situation. Ooh. Is What? What? Is Mark Talia, is he coming back to repay the faith? Um, yeah. I'd say so. Um, like they wouldn't. They wouldn't just get him in there because he's been a bad boy and, you know, he needs to repay the faith. The, the, they'll make the call for the right reason. And I, I think if there wasn't an incident, Mark would have started last week. He would have started this week. He probably would have started the final uh, because of that incident. Unless he got an opportunity, he took his opportunity. I think there was a couple of occasions on defence where Mac Hansen caught him out. I think they're around those, uh, the structures that they were throwing at the All Blacks. Um, that was probably the only downside, but everything else made it was, it was perfect. I think um, Fozzie's very little, you know. He's a very little man. He's parked that. And if I'm going to be honest, there's, there's not much separating these two players. Mm. Uh, they're very, very similar players. They're busy. They can beat defenders one-on-one. -on -one. They're hungry. They can score tries. I think they're both, you know, uh, Will and... And Lester on five each, so that's try scoring machines. Mark Tilly is not too far behind, so I think this is just an opportunity for him. He will know the pressure's on. This is a semi final. I felt the pressure, you know, with that quarter final in 2011, and what what eventually from that. There's no better way to go out and then put out a performance that will make your teammates, it will show your teammates how much this team means to you. And it could become a masterclass. And saying that, Mark Talia is going to be feeling the pressure because that week I was leading in 2011, I was under so much pressure. Personally, it was it was probably the hardest week I've ever had in the sporting arena. Just knowing what had happened. You know, I'm playing in a semi-final Rugby World Cup on the biggest stage up against uh, Argentina. Back then I was playing Australia. And this is do or die. So the, the thing keys for Mark is juggling this week, not putting too much pressure on yourself before the game because there's going to be a lot of thoughts and emotions going through your head this week and just um, just continue to build. But it won't be hard for him to find that edge. You know, it wasn't hard for me to find that edge in 2011. And uh, once you get out there, mate, just make sure that first touch is a good one because if it can, you're going to have a cracker. Well, will we see another uh, Superman <laughs> Try assist, one of the greats. One of the greats. Uh, uh, hopefully, Maunonu gives a good pass. <laughs> <laughs> Is he? Uh, so, you know. It was never Ma'a's fault, just me. <laughs> Anything to add on uh, Mark Slayer or the team in general there, Paul? No, no. Um, I think Izzy's covered it all. And from a perspective, from the inside out, looking from the mm. inside out, even though he's not inside the squad at the moment, I think that was a great look at um, how someone might feel um, in the lead up under those sorts of circumstances. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think as he covered it brilliantly there. There were two guys on the team last week that didn't get on the field, Finlay mm. and Damien McKenzie, named again. Um, See, I think McKenzie gets on if we're behind. With 10 minutes to go, 10, 15 minutes to go, I think. Last week? Yeah, exactly. last week. I think he gets on to sort of try and sort of ignite. Right, that, that's his that's his game. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that he can't defend. I'm just saying his strength is the ability to create something out of sort of nothing. Yep. Um, so yeah. if the All Blacks were behind last week, 
I think he gets on in that last 15, 10 minutes um, because um, they were sort of holding a lead. They, you know, it's like we want to stand solid. Um, so, and as as Aaron, Aaron Smith had, had 10 minutes rest during the game. So. As soon as that happened, there was no chance he was coming off. <laughs> yeah, game, game in the balance, say, hey, you, you think – you know, does he does he have a crack? You, do you want a point of difference? You bring him on. I think this game against Argentina, hopefully if it's able, we can get a couple of points ahead. You know, maybe 15 points to allow Finlay Christie to have 25 minutes off the bench, see what he's able to do in, 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 in the big stage and, and get some game time, game minutes under his belt because he hasn't had much. Let's, let's have a look at it. He's had very little, really, and we're expecting him, if the unthinkable happens, to come on and and be there in the biggest moment. Um, so hopefully that can happen in there, the same as DMAC. I feel if he's going to have a chance to come on, he'll have a crack at the back, get him on at fullback, bit of space, uh, opportunity to just roam around and pop up where he, where he does best and, and have a crack. Um, so, yeah, oh, I think that's where they'll have the impact. Nice. Nice. Right, let's look at the games this week. The first one. Argentina v New Zealand. Argentina seven dollars fifty. New Zealand a dollar seven. The draw thirty ones. Argentina one to twelve nine dollars. Thirteen plus. I've got here two thousand six hundred. Yeah, it's not. It's twenty six dollars. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, New Zealand one to twelve is three dollars and dollar forty two. Thirteen plus. New Zealand are seventeen and a half point favourites. Paul, where is the early money going? It's one way traffic. Ridiculous. It's unbelievable. The well, it's not actually because this is the sort of support the All Blacks used to see, um, what about five, six years ago? Yeah. Um, you said they were a dollar seven in that match result market, they opened up at a dollar 14. Mm. Uh, the All Blacks, and as soon as the market opened, punters were on. We had a five thousand dollar bet at a dollar 14, a four thousand two hundred dollar bet at a dollar 14, a four thousand dollar bet at a dollar 14. So that's forced the bookies' hand here, they've had to. Crunch the All Blacks in, so they're now at a dollar seven from a dollar fourteen, and the Argentinians who opened up at five fifty in that match result market now have drifted out to seven fifty, just on the weight of support that the All Blacks have got from Kiwi punters. It is crazy. The the, the faith is back. I'm telling you now, the faith is back. And the, <laughs> the punters are backing the All Blacks with their hard earned cash. Yes. And that, and that winning, oh, the biggest bet on Argentina, that 750 has attracted some interest now. Okay. So uh, we've had a $1,900 bet on Argentina in that match result market at $7.50. So that it looks like we've sort of found where the market should be sitting, just with the fact that we've just started to take a wee bit of action on the Argentinians. And the winning team in margin book, um, New Zealand to win by 13 and over has been smashed. Now $1.42. Uh, we've had a $2,000 and a $1,000 bet at uh, $1.42 on the new uh, on the All Blacks to win by 13 or more. Yes. Right. Uh, Izzy, can Argentina win this game? No. No. Okay, that's the podcast doing this thing. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not being arrogant or overconfident. I just... I think I think this All Blacks team is going to flick a switch, and the only way I can see Argentina winning is going back to 2022 in Christchurch. What they do so well there, they they suffocated us on defence. They bought so much line speed. You know, David Kidwell, Kidwell was all over the All Blacks that week. They come out with line speed. They they wrestled us. They slowed the ball up, so we weren't able to play quick. They were disruptive at the at the breakdown. So if they're going to have any chance, they've got to try and find what they're able to do because uh, in 2020 in Christchurch, because the following week they got pumped by 60 in Hamilton. So if they're going to have a chance, they got a chance there, particularly at the breakdown and, and on D. But other than that, and also you know they would have taken a lot of our confidence out of seeing the all that struggle with the set piece rolling more defence. Um, I think they scored a couple of nice tries in Christchurch that day at the set piece area couple of special plays offline out or a couple of rolling moors. Um, so, yeah, they, they, they'll they have belief they can do it, but I just think this all Blacks team will be too classy. And I, I'm, I'm expecting 14 points plus. The line is 17 and a half. Yep. 
which side of the line are you on, Paul? You said Argentina at the start of the tournament would make the final. Yeah. They're not going to now. Oh, you change your mind? I'm I'm agreeing with Izzy. Don't want to dye your hair? And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I agree with Izzy here. <laughs> I think that... Yeah, and I agree right with, to agree to him, just don't follow him. I, 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 I agree with the synopsis as well. For Argentina to be any chance in this game, defensively, that line has to be rushing up and just absolutely suffocating the All Blacks. And then when they do have the ball, well, we know Buffelli can kick it from anywhere, pretty much anywhere on the field. So anywhere from around 50 metres out, any penalties that are given away, um, he's... <laughs> He's a very, very good chance of picking mm. up points. The Argentines will pick up points. Um, discipline. The All Blacks have to keep 15 men on the field for all 80 minutes of this game. Um, otherwise, once again, you sort of let the Argentinian back in again. But I think that the All Blacks are going to win this one mm. fairly comfortably. Um, so I, I think the line is is where it should be. I think that's a that's a solid line, the seventeen and a half. Um, if I had to go one way or the other, I'd probably take Argentina plus seventeen and a half. I I, I just think that if they make this a grind for the All Blacks and tie up position, um, it it might just frustrate the All Blacks slightly. I still think there's enough class in that All Black side to do the business. I think 17 and a half. I'm just slightly favoring Argentina getting the points. This has got, uh, for me, a real feel about uh, the 2015 quarterfinals when we took on France mm. and we absolutely brained them. I don't think the score will blow up that much. Uh, but I think, yeah, New Zealand win comfortably. I've actually had a bet with the, uh, the guy, Will, uh, downstairs in the cafe here for a coffee. For a coffee. Uh, I've said 37-17 final score to the ABs. That's oh, awesome. Nice. Are you that confident you're picking the score? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 37-17. Well, well, and it will actually picked uh, 35-17. So well, there's not a lot between There's not a see. lot, no. I could uh, guarantee it now, punters, 36-17. That'll be the final score. Um, yeah, ABs, ABs, ABs. Next one, England, the South Africa. England four dollars eighty. South Africa a dollar seventeen. Mm. And the draw twenty six. Uh, South Africa thirteen plus dollar seventy five. One to twelve is three dollars. England one to twelve six dollars. And the line is so thirteen, 13 and a half. Yeah. Paul, I heard you on SNZ this morning. Presumably talking to Izzy, mm. uh, saying that England has a lot of backers. Yeah. Yeah, punters thinking that there's going to be an upset uh, in the semi final between England and be the Spring. Great Hawks. result for New Zealand, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves now. <laughs> um, look, 67% of turnover on that match result market is on England, who are currently $4.80. So, there's a yeah, there, there's a bit of a liability on the Poms um, with us at the moment, uh, and in the head-to-head -head market, the biggest bet so far, thousand uh, dollars on England at four dollars and sixty cents head-to-head. Um, so I don't know where this confidence comes from, mm. um, and I, 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 I'm guessing that um, near Narba. Um, we'll have a slightly different look at this game, but I'll, I'm I'm trying to figure out how England and um, come out and win this match, and I I, I don't know why punters are so confident at mm. this stage on England actually winning this game. I everywhere I look, I, I just think the South Africans are, are going to dominate. As he mentioned it before, I'm just looking at the stats from the the French game. South Africa. Didn't miss, like you said, 43 tackles, only a 77% success rate when tackling. They made uh, 66 extra tackles. Mm. So maybe that's an area the English could try and exploit, is he? Yeah, yes. Um, 
but can they throw the ball around? Can they play rugby? Have they shown any any type of running rugby? Time will tell. They might surprise. Look, I wouldn't be surprised if they come out and absolutely throw something out there we haven't seen, but it'll go against everything that Steve Borthwick's about, and that's kicking territory, controlling position on the ball, playing safe and smart rugby. And, yeah, so I think that just plays exactly into South Africa's game their mindset. They they don't want an expansive open running game, which Ben, um, ben O'Keefe's going to officiate the, that way. You know, he's going to keep it open for them. So both teams are going to have to work for every point. Um, but, yeah, I just – I don't know what the punters are saying, Paulie. Uh, they've had an easy side of the draw. They've just really eased their way into a semi final, and now they're here, and I, I'm predicting they're just going to get a big old wake-up call. But in saying that, I wouldn't be surprised if England tenaced their way through and got to a final. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's the replay of the 2019 final. They're out for revenge, mm. the English. Um, Not against the Springboks. It'll be so. interesting. They don't, need, they don't, they don't need any any footage or any revenge to get themselves up, mate. No. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how the South Africans, what, what team they roll out, whether they go... The makeup of the bench. Of the bench, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Does Hydra oh, sit out or you go money in the box? Money oh, the box is pretty solid, eh? Yeah. Oh, they start with uh, Le Boc mm -hmm. and, and then Pollard can come on in the second half at some stage um, and and kick the points if, if and when needed. Mm. Uh, but yeah, oh, I thought Ma money Le Boc was very, very good yeah. in that quarter final. Um, so I don't think there's any need to fiddle around with things there. I, I, I thought it was a brave decision to go with um, it was at Cobus in the number nine jersey um, but he played really well that, awesome. that try that he set up he just delayed the short little pop pass um, Tell you what, if you had him for an anytime try scorer and you're same game multi that was gut wrenching watching him pass that ball <laughs> I get the feeling you had him for an anytime try scorer in the same game multi Maybe <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Uh, it was beautiful. He just just held the pass up, just momentarily, popped it. Should have dummied it. Strolled over the line. Bang. Yeah. Done. That try. was a try. Uh, all right. Before we get to the betting of the week, start one, bench one, cut two this week. Oh, gee. That's We're talking bit. about uh, fly halves and, you know, points are a premium this tournament. So... I've looked at the the remaining four teams and their go-to uh, kickers, uh, place kickers. We've got Richie Mwanga, just plays 10. He is ninth when it comes to total points, scored this World Cup with 41. Emiliano Boffelli plays on the wing or fullback. He is fourth total points this World Cup with 51. Mane Leboc, Utility. Utility, wow, utility can play almost anywhere. Um, 30th overall, he's only scored 19 points, hasn't had a good time off the tee. And Owen Farrell plays 10 or 12, seventh overall with 44 points this World Cup. Izzy, start one, bench one, and cut two of them, please. Well, cut on. There you go, he's gone. <laughs> and I'll, I'll cut <laughs> Emiliano Buffelli. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, I won't cut Emiliano Buffelli. He's a nice guy. He's a good guy. I'd have him in my team. So I cut Manny Lebot. Now bench Emiliano Buffelli. And I start Richimo. There you go. I'm a loyal, I'm a loyal man, brother. I got a good heart. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> but Owen and uh, who else was I say? Lebot. Lebot. Gone. Yeah. Yeah, you're a big fan of Argentina and South Africa. So what was the... Start one, bench one, and the other two are gone. Yeah, in regards to and to what? Just the, the their kicking ability or their playing ability? Kicking, well, just like it's... they all around, all around. Okay. We're looking at their kicking ability. Yeah. But also, you know, I, I, a lot of them play multiple positions. Right. So there could be utility... You, wow, struggling with that word. Utility value. Okay. Um... Don't overthink it. Farrell. 
starting. Cut. Oh. <laughs> um, I think that was that was a hundred percent from you knew it, as soon as you name those players to play ten or there was a hundred percent chance that Izzy was going to cut Farrell and start Mwanga. <laughs> it was the other two where he was going to juggle around a wee bit. So, yeah, cut Farrell. I'm going to start Mwanga as well. Mm. Um, in fact, I'm going to be exactly like Izzy. I'm going to have Buffelli on the bench because to have him come on off the bench in that second half, knowing that you'll be picking up points from anywhere from 50 metres out. Yeah. I think that's a huge, huge advantage to have. And he's a very, very good, he's a good defender on the wing as well. So, I, yeah, I'm exactly the same as Izzy, to be fair. There you go. This and is very dangerous. I'm agreeing with Izzy <laughs> quite a few times. Meant this to time. be. Meant to be, Paul. And I'll say three for three. Same. Makes sense. All right. Let's wrap this up. Betting. We've all got. A hundred dollars. I'm struggling, boys. Hold on. I've changed my mind 300 times here. <laughs> Izzy's in all sorts. Uh, so, Paul, I'll start with you. Where is your hundred dollars going this week? Look, I'm going to stay away from the All Blacks game. Uh, no. I'm, I'm sure that you guys are going to get stuck into that. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll go to the other semi-final, uh, England against South Africa. I've, I'm really... I was trying to put together a same game multi um, for this one. And so I'm just adding it up as we speak. But I'm going to go with uh, South Africa to win by nine or more. And Colby to score a try. In fact, I can't do that yet because... Teams haven't been teams named. haven't been named. That's why I couldn't put it together. So okay, I'll go. Forget that. I'll just take a single bet in that South Africa England semi final. Is in all sorts here, folks. And I'll go anytime try scorer. Cheslin Colby to score a try. It's a dollar seventy five. My handy goes on. There we go. Easy, ready to go for a big big final. Very safe. Very safe. Do you want some more time, Izzy? No, I've got mine. It's good you to know, go. Full bam, handy on the nose. And I'm going both games because I'm brave. And I'm going to go Argentina, New Zealand. New Zealand to win by 11 to 20. Winning team of margin. New Zealand 11 20, 11 points in between 11 and 20 points, $3.20. And then I've gone South Africa 1 to 12, winning margin, paying three bucks. To return $9.60, $960, $860 of it. I love it. Where do you go? South Africa 13 and over. 1 to 12, I think. Oh, 1 to 12? What's that? $9.60, yes. $9.60. Yes. <clears throat> All right, I've got two plays uh, like last week. A same game multi in the New Zealand game. We've got New Zealand winning margin 17 or more. Yeah. Uh, first half over two and a half tries. First half over 22 and a half points. And total points over 56 and a half. I think the total points line is about 48 and a half for the game. Uh, that comes out at $5. So I'll put 50 on that at $5. And then my other 50 is going on a two leg anytime try scorer multi. But I've written Beauty Barrett here. Bodie Barrett. He's a beauty. Beauty Barrett. Uh, and Cheslin Colby. That comes out at 437. The other 50 on that. Find your own player. Come on. Yeah. Please. Jeez. Please. You're a safe punter, eh? Safe but smart, man. Like five bucks. That's <laughs> value there. Value. <laughs> oh, mate, joking, mate. I just need to be smart. Like, I'm only saying because I'm, I'm a horrible punter and I, just I can't do this game. So I'll I like it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it personally. I'm going <laughs> to take it. I like it. <laughs> We can uh, we can okay, celebrate. If I win, if I win there, if I had won three grand last week, would I got three grand or not? Well, if you put a hundred dollars on that bet, yes, you would have. Oh, I thought you just put it on. Oh, yeah, hypothetical, we, hypothetical <laughs> cash. <laughs> it's pretend money. Tap it, tap it into that TAB account, boys. We're going to get paid this week. <laughs> we don't have tap and go. We can't do that. <laughs> All right. Let's leave it there, boys. Thank you very much. Don't forget uh, promotions. Oh, yeah. Shh. 
try saving bonus back um take a pre-match first try scorer uh bet and if your player doesn't score the first try but scores second third the second third or fourth try uh, you'll get your money back up to fifty dollars as a bonus bet and of course the oval ball mega multi buster um you're probably gonna have to throw in some rugby league uh, to qualify for that because there's not too many uh, rugby matches left yeah. but you can take the two semi-finals maybe throw in the kiwis uh, and another one of those rugby league matches and um, that'll qualify for a oval ball mega multi buster so check out all the t's and c's on the tab website very nice just looking to on the punt. bet safely bet safely r18 just looking at the punters lounge uh our rugby world cup tips to this week he's tipped new zealand by 21 to 30 and New Zealand to score more than 33 and a half points. And he's got South Africa minus 13 and a half and South Africa to win by between 16 and 20. It's six dollars fifty. Wow. He has been going all right this tournament too. Confident. He's very yeah. confident. Yeah. All right. Who is that? It's a shark. Anonymous. Ah. Anonymous. Not you two. He's a nobody. He's very not us. No, no, <laughs> not no. us. All right, we're done. We'll leave it there. Izzy, thank you very much for joining us again, mate. Appreciate that. Appreciate your time. Cheers, Izzy. Paul and you. Big week of rugby. Huge, huge. Up the ABs. Cheers, boys. <laughs> and to everyone out there, we will see you back here next week on the Pick and Go Rugby Podcast. <laughs>